Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to TES Chat. I'm Michael Shaw, I'm Deputy Editor of the TES Magazine, and I'm delighted to be joined this evening by the author, Rachel Billington. Hello. Hi. Uh, Rachel is the author of a huge number of books. Uh, she's written more than 20 novels for adults, as well as non-fiction, books on religion, and half a dozen books for children. Uh, if you have any questions about any of her books, um, please do send them in. You can put a message on Twitter with the hashtag uh, hashtag TES chat, uh, or you can send us an email to webchat at tes.co.uk. Um, these can be on any book at all. It could be on uh, Star Time, The Missing Boy, uh, or your sequel to Jane Austen's Emma, Perfect Happiness. Um, but I think for much of this evening, we're probably going to be talking about uh, your, your last two books, um, which you have here, uh, Poppy's Hero and Poppy's Angel. Uh, and their connection to young people whose parents uh, are inside the prison system, um, because that's the case with uh, Poppy, the heroine of these books. Yeah, I, it was rather surprising I found myself writing this book, because I, in my adult books, I have used some of my prison experience writing. Uh, it's just come out, characters have been into prison or come out. But I'd never particularly thought that it was a subject for children. And then actually, Francis Lincoln, my publisher, said, would I be interested in writing something for children? And I thought about it. I was quite unsure. It's a pretty kind of serious subject. And then I, I said it really had to be an adventure. It had to be exciting. I, wasn't, I didn't want to write something that was going to be interesting or teach people things. I mean, that got to happen. I hope it does happen. But, but not, I not... wanted to write a book that children, any old children, and perhaps I was quite keen children who never thought about prison or knew nothing about it. So that's how really Poppy started, was a story for children about a subject many wouldn't know about, and some that did would feel rather alone. And so you were keen to avoid it seeming as if it was just an, an issue book, as it were. Exactly. No, I, I'm not keen. I'm not, I have been involved in quite a lot of, sort of organisations that do help with issues, and I'm very pleased to do that. But I think as a writer, which I am first and foremost, your job is to, to make children excited or adults excited and interested in what you're writing about. And um, in fact... Uh, I, I know you, you had asked me earlier why I got into prisons at all, so it is quite odd. Um, apart from my, the fact that my father was, has always been, had always been very interested in prisons, um, and I had been to him a, with him a few times, mm. uh, Lord Longford, but um, I was actually writing a novel, so it came out of my writing called Bodily Harm, and it uh, started with a violent happening, a violent action, in which a young woman was really quite badly hurt, and a man went to prison. And I realised I couldn't write about this without going into prison. And it is one of the things that interests me, that I was not particularly young then, that I'd never, at this point, been into a prison. And by sheer chance, that moment, a charity called New Bridge, um, which was run by someone called Eric McGraw, wanted to start this newspaper, Inside Time, which... It, I'll hold it up just so anyone who's interested can see it. And it's specifically for prisoners. And it's mostly like this, but it is also online, so families of prisoners can read it. And I became interested, really, about prisoners and families and children through writing and working for the newspapers, which I've done for 20 years. So, so when was your first prison visit? Ah, well, it probably was about 20 years ago, or a bit longer now. And um, I think the first one was my father, which was quite amusing, because there's a, a, a chap called... Um, well, he was self-styled the most dangerous man in prison. And I went with my father. Yeah, we made a film about him, actually. Charlie... Yes, um, it, it Jim Broadbent played your exactly. father. Exactly. Well, no, that was a book, f film about my father, but they made a film about this most dangerous man in prison. This is Charlie Bronson. Charlie Bronson. Oh. But I went with my father, and Charlie Bronson is not... He's a, he's a brilliant man, extraordinary man, but not quite like other people. And so he does take uh, hostages now and again. So when I, that was my first visit to prison, <laughs> just slightly nerve-wracking. And um, anyway, Charlie couldn't have been more charming, but there were about sort of 20 prison officers in the room where we were all on our own 
And at one point, Charlie, who's a character, I'll say nothing against him, very good artist, good writer, but um, he suddenly got a bit kind of restive because he thought one of the officers was looking at him too much. And I thought, oh my God, not first time in prison I'm going to be taken a hostage. But anyway, I wasn't. And since then, um, I go a lot. And basically, I go to write about good programs in prison. I mean, I'm the kind of good news part of the paper because I try and find things that are helping prisoners and families and children. So that's, there's all this sort of background to what I'm writing. There, there are some very vivid descriptions of uh, visiting time in the prisons in, in, in both the books, uh, particularly in the, in, the, yeah. in, the, in the first book. I mean, did that, that clearly must be based on, on your own experiences of visiting. Yeah, and looking at it from a child's point of view, because both books are written from the point of view of a, a girl, Poppy, who's, I don't specify her age, but she's still in primary school, so she's nine, ten, and then she's older in bit older and Poppy's angel than Poppy's hero. And her beloved dad goes into prison. And this is such a sort of welter of emotions. And this is a girl from a sort of relatively steady home. Um, I mean, Tiz, i just give you one figure which always astonishes me. There, there are probably as many um, as 200,000 children. I mean, a huge figure. Um, during a year in England and Wales who have parents going into prison. So it's a much higher figure, in fact, than children whose parents get divorced. I, and I, even larger, I think, than the number who are in care, who obviously yeah. at the TS we write a lot about, but uh, sure we've, we've done do. far fewer stories about uh, children whose families are in prison. And it's a very complicated one because obviously a lot of families um, feel it brings, as it does in the way society is at the moment, it brings shame onto them. So there is this element of punishing children as well as the, um, the prisoner who is rightfully, usually rightfully, being punished. Um, well, that, that brings us on to one of our first questions, which is from uh, Claire Masters, who's a teacher in Birmingham. Uh, and she asks, how might the behaviour of a child whose parents are in prison be different? And how as a school can we best support such a child? Um, I mean, obviously every child is different, every situation is different, it goes without saying. And one of the biggest differences would be if it's a mother who's in prison rather than a father. Because if the mother's in prison, almost certainly all the figures show that the child will have to live somewhere else. Very seldom do they then live with their father, so they'll probably perhaps go to a grandparent or... So it could be they'll even remove from the school. So a mother going into prison is a, a, a hideous thing for a child. And, I mean, of course, I'm happy to say there are far less women in prison than men. There are, roughly speaking, 4,000 women in prison and something like 84,000 men. Um, so, for, uh, And there shouldn't, most of these women, in my view, I say firmly, mm. um, should not be in prison because they're usually in for quite short sentences, which is pointless. They're not in for violent, very, I mean, some are, of course, there are always a few and, and they need to go. But most of these women shouldn't really be in. And in fact, I think um, sort of governments very slowly are realising the enormous damage which is done. Um, for a child, for their mother to go in prison. If it's the father, which is what I'm writing about in Poppy's Hero and Poppy's Angel, it's kind of, it sounds sort of hideous to say, but it's sort of better because probably they will be staying with their mother. On the other hand, the mother will be under huge pressure. Um, frankly, whether the relationship is good with the father or bad or whether he's lived with them or not, there's going to be this thing. That, and there's a the whole question then of whether the child is going to visit the father in prison. And you mentioned I wrote about it. And it, that's, again, another very complicated one because um, many, um, or not many, but there are quite a lot. And I, I was in Dartmoor um, not very long ago talking on this subject with some prisoners there. And one or two of them said to me that they didn't want their children to come. And I said, why not? Don't you want to keep in touch? And they said, yes, of course we would, but we haven't told them that we're in prison. So they're keeping it um, secret. Now, I, and funnily enough, there were a couple of women teacher in there, and one or two others, were aghast. And uh, we said, well, what age is your, your daughter it was? 
he said, well, she's, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I wouldn't, I think I can keep it secret from her till I'm, till she's 12. And we thought, what? A, a 10, 11, 12 year old girl who isn't going to realize that her father's in prison, even if it doesn't come out in, through local papers or any other region. Actually, well, that, that, I, mean, I think we'll have to come back to, to Claire's question in a moment. Oh, about, God, about I haven't done Claire's no, question. No, no. I'm going oh, to do Claire's it's, question. It's, oh, no, well, Can well, I do Claire's uh, question? Well, uh, actually, uh, what, what you brought us on, uh, well, let, let's answer Claire's question first, which is you, the, the changes yeah. in behaviour you cover but, um, seems very strikingly in Poppy's Hero, the way yeah. you have a, a, a lead character who, though sympathetic, uh, as a reader, you get a sense as the book goes on she's that she's behaving in in a, a destructive way. She's yeah. she's letting her teachers down. She's turning away from friends who, who trust Absolutely. her. And it must have been it, difficult as a writer to create that balance where you have a character who's still sympathetic, but at the yeah. same time you can sense is going astray. Well, I think if you know, uh, uh, as I was writing about a child who was in the most terrible muddle, because that's another thing. Because children generally want to love their parents, even really bad parents. In my experience, they really want to love them. And um, they want to love the father. So in, in Poppet's Hear It, the first story, she doesn't believe he's guilty. She's not going to believe he's guilty. And I think that's something a teacher might come across. The children are, are filled with anger and confusion because they don't understand. And do they still love a father who's done bad things too? You know, our society is not very forgiving. Forgiveness is not a very sort of high on the agenda. So, but... Um, there's all that, and I think I think the main thing from a teacher's point of view, I, I hasten to add, I only once taught for three weeks, and I was such a disaster that I realized I deeply admire anyone in a primary school, chaos every single lesson, so I'm not, I wouldn't make a good which, teacher. Which age group were you teaching? It was, they were 10, and it was a big, big class. This is a very long time ago. It was 50 in the class, can you believe it? And they were two thirds boys, and it was in Paddington, around that area where I was living at the time, and I was disastrous. Anyway, my, so my advice is not from someone who really understands about teaching. But my feeling is that the most important thing, if the parents have told the teacher that the child's in prison, or the child herself has said what's happening to her, or even a friend, if the, if the teacher knows, that's excellent, that's very, very good. And that she's somehow got to make the child feel that it's not the end of the world, it's not totally extraordinary, it's not out of the... that, that, that her life hasn't changed totally. It's got to give her a sense of continuity and that her father, if it's a father or mother, still loves her what's ever happened, still she is that person and she herself has no should have no guilt or shame about it. And that's a pretty difficult thing to do. So you know, in a bit like your treatment of the character, do you think there's, there's a balance between sympathy and expectation? That the teachers yeah. need to be sympathetic and understand, but at the same time to maintain those high yeah. expectations rather than, than letting, letting that young person slip away? Exactly. No, you can't sort of endlessly give, um, allow them to leave. But I do think they will need more attention. And if they can get special attention... Uh, with if they have a teacher they're particularly sympathetic with or a helper of some sort, I think a child may need that, particularly if they're not getting on with their friends. I mean, because Poppy starts behaving so badly, her friends all get fed up, and I'm afraid the friends don't behave very well. And my impression is, um, I mean, I've got four children, and two girls and two boys, and, and grandchildren too, um, mostly boys, actually. But my impression is girls are sort of, you know, they're nosier and worse about it in a way, whereas boys generally are not going to sort of ask awkward questions. But on the other hand, maybe girls can be more sympathetic if they try. And are there any organisations you know that uh, schools should contact if they, if they need advice on this? Absolutely. There. In fact, I wrote them down because I always forget the names of things, and all of them I've had contact with. And one of them... Um, writes for us in Inside Time. And Inside Time is, as I said, online. And you can, there, and it has uh, attached to it something called Inside Information. So there's a lot in Inside Time. There's one called PACT, which is Prison Prisoners Advice and Care Trust. And then there's another one called POPS, P-O-P-S, which is Partners of Prisoners and Family Support Group. They're the ones who write for us. And then there's another one called 
Action for Prisoners' Families, which is also very good. And they all, most of them, um, either work, and work with helplines or um, some of them are involved in prison um, visitors' centres. I mean, visitors' centres is the, it's a good thing, actually. When I first started going to prison, you stood in a line outside a wall with barbed wire on the top in the rain or the snow. And now there are prisoner centres, a lot of them, most of them, I think, I don't know the figures, manned voluntarily by charities or, and a lot of the charities are having people in who are not paid. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Yep. But it makes the whole difference. Can you imagine you arrive with a baby, with a five-year-old, with maybe a, a ten-year-old, Perhaps you've even taken out of school. I don't know whether that would be allowed. I'm sure that's very the bad. The possibility to describe but... one of the parents and having a strip search before going oh, in. And strip that search, experience. nappy search, dogs. If you've got a little child one, um, who's frightened of animals, it's not good to have animals sniffing around you. And some of the prison officers are, are kind and some, quite fr frankly, aren't. Uh, it's, you know... Maybe that's an off day and they get used to it and they don't realise how formidable it is for children. Um, and all that's terribly important. I mean, my own, in case I forget to say it and I gabble on without saying it, I really think that prisons should be on the curriculum and schools. I think teachers should actually teach children about prisons. And that way will help the children of prisoners, but much more than that, it maybe will give an insight to children who are never going to go near a prison, thank God, um, what it is like. And at the moment, people get their info from, you know, tabloids as they get older. Well, and I, uh, uh, anyway. I know that, 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 that reminded me of, a, of a oh, cheap, some lines. Hang on, I've lost my... Um, that reminded me of some lines from, from the book. Oh, does it say? Uh, off. Shall I just hold it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can actually read, read, read some lines from the book while, while, while you're doing that, which, which is uh, a scene where, where Poppy uh, says to her mother, all those men inside their cells locked up just a few yards away and people going about as if they didn't exist. To which her mum replies, it's no different from a hospital, is it? But people go inside hospitals, said Poppy, they don't know about prisons. Who wants to know about prisons, said her mum. She was walking more quickly now. Yeah. And a scene that really describes the, the willingness yeah. of people to avoid discussing prisons. It's, it's, it's something that... Fascinating, isn't it? That the whole of society, really, except people who become involved, is a kind of grand um, dance of denial, which is very peculiar because almost... I mean, every big city has at least one prison. I mean, even small towns, I mean, local towns. I live in Dorset a lot of the time, and a sort of small town like Dorchester has a prison. Shepton Mallet. I mean, all, they're, they're prisons all over, but people literally manage not to see them. And yet every, every school, statistically, is so likely, if there are 24,000 schools in England yeah. and that many hundred thousand yeah. uh, young people, uh, every teacher will, at some stage, have come across a, one pupil whose parent will have been affected by this. I think so, and I think it's just as important if you're at a school where there are likely to be quite a lot, you know, in certain uh, inner city areas, you probably find there are more, that's the way life is. Um, on the other hand, it, it seems to me that children who, who uh, need to be educated almost as much, if not more, uh, who are not going to have anything to do with it. What about the school's involvement with parents? Uh, schools are always being told that they should have a good relationship with parents. Um, it's obviously more difficult in this case. Should they try and um, create written communication with the father if he's in prison? Um, what, should, what can they do to support a mother who might feel she's being stigmatised by the school or by the community? Yeah, I, th I think it's terribly difficult again because of this, um, because of how people take it differently. and and how some of them, many prisoners, I say the majority are men, um, really don't want anyone to know about it. And if they can hide it, all the better. But that, that goes in one line. But the other line is the, the thing that's most important to any prisoner is family contact. So it's, it's a funny mix of things. Um, and whether a teacher could get would want to or could become involved in that very complicated dynamic. I mean, obviously, they'd be doing it for the child's sake. And I think it, if it can work, it, it, could be, it could be tremendously helpful just to sort of normalize stuff. You know, I'm, as I say, I don't, I'm not a teacher. I've never taught except for my 
disaster period. And um, I don't know how much teachers actually involve themselves in what's going on with the home life of their pupils. Do they quite a lot? You'd, I would. It, it varies. It varies a lot from school to school, and yeah. uh, and some will have uh, dedicated staff who work more on the pastoral side, so that they could help. But there, there's certainly a character in your in the second book, Poppy's Angel, a former a former dinner lady who uh, is able to bridge the school world and the and the prison world. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know if there are many many characters like. I mean, I think it would be very good. I mean, it, just to go back to my sort of thesis that children should know more about it, and it should come from teachers, probably in primary school at a, at a young age, in a kind of non dramatic way. You know, the way prisons are reported to older children, I hope not so much to younger, but it's kind of as if everybody in prison is murderers, rapists and paedophiles, run together, murderers, rapists, paedophiles. And of course, the vast majority of people who are going to go in for not very long, for something that they certainly shouldn't have done, most of them, some are not guilty, but most are, and then they're going to be out again. And the figure I don't know, I'd really be interested to know, maybe it exists somewhere, is how many people there are in our country, I'm sure it does exist, in England and Wales, which are generally the figures, who have actually been in prison. Because, you know, you get on a bus, you're on a tube, you're talking to a friend, you, it's amazing. <laughs> or not amazing when you think 85,000 in at any one point, and some of them going in and out. So it's a sort of absurd idea that you can cut what's going on in prison off entirely. I suppose the difficulty is, is the danger of, of normalising it, though, at the same time. Uh, there are a number of schemes that have been taking place in London where former prisoners have gone round schools describing their experiences, uh, and evaluations of these schemes tend to find that actually they, they don't work. Rather than deterring young people uh, from, from uh, committing any crimes, it makes it seem more as if, oh, that's a natural a path you can take. Yeah, but actually, I find that I'm sure that you're, if that's what you say the figures are, but uh, they, they're not going into prison. You see, mm. the truth is there is no one who goes into prison who thinks they'd like to stay there longer than an hour or two. It, it's no fun at all. And that's the trouble, that image of it being a quite sort of cheerful place. So I'm, something's gone slightly skew with there if they think it's all right. Though I have to say, I took my daughter, um, we were doing some work, um, into Holloway. She said, oh my God, it looks just like some terrible boarding school. <laughs> I mean, she hadn't been to boarding school so properly. She doesn't know what boarding school was like. But she, of course, it's a modern prison. And the prisons do vary very, very much. Some are not, not, um, not frightening in the way we think of it. I mean, Dartmoor is frightening because it's on the middle of a moor. And Pent all the old ones, Pentonville, Wandsworth, Brixton, are very weird because you're like stepping back. Well, you are stepping back a hundred years. Well, actually, that's it's, it's quite impressive. In, the, in the, the two books, you get a sense of three very different prisons, yeah. um, including yeah. including the wonderfully named Griswold Slops, which <laughs> for anyone anyone from London immediately recognises as a reference to Wormswood Scrubs, presumably. Well, I mean, how can I um, <laughs> accept this thought? <laughs> Um, we, you mentioned earlier on that you've, you've been surprised to find uh, parents who've been trying to uh, hide the truth from, from a child. Yeah. Uh, we've actually had, a, had an email in yeah. um, from uh, one, of, one of our viewers now, probably. Um, I'm not going to give their name, but it says, uh, Hi, I have a son in prison and would like to know how to tell his younger sisters, 10 and 5 years, where their brother is right now. They think he's away working, uh, but... Uh, I think uh, there are some words missing here, but I can no longer cope with this lie. In telling them, I, but in telling them, I feel I'm taking away their innocence and burdening them with this awful reality. Just the thought of them having to go through the searching my prison officers before seeing him in a place mm. like that is bad enough. I'd like your views and opinions on this. Kind of. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly the dilemma for a woman. I mean, it's exactly what Poppy's hero, the first one, is about. The second one's more about an open prison, and I'm sure she's absolutely right. She must tell them. I mean, perhaps she didn't because her husband didn't didn't want her to. It is you can see, naturally, that. But I, I'm sure from from the sound of her email, she's a very loving person because she cares so much and doesn't want to take away what she says. I mean, that's very sad. The idea of taking away a child's innocence. I suppose my feeling is that children are not. I mean, there's. When I say they're not as innocent as one sometimes thinks they are, I don't mean that, that they're less than um, good and 
sensitive and all the things we want them to be. But I, what I really mean is I think they know, always know much more. And in my experience, very often, when the mother does tell the children, she'll find they know already. And it will be a huge relief to them to be told. I mean, maybe she's managed to keep it completed, but a 10-year-old, um, of course, she doesn't say how long her husband's been in prison um, and how long he's going to be in. But if it's any length of time, I think all she can do is say that he still loves them and she still loves him, which is the very important thing. I think uh, this, this, this case being, being a, a, an older brother to them, so her, 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 brother, her son, but, but, um, but, they, yeah, but in, this, yes. in this case it makes it very very clear there would be that risk they'd hear from other, other young people who, yeah. might, who might be of yeah. a uh, yes. generation between. Yes, yeah, so he must be probably quite young if she's got two young children as well. Sorry, not the husband at all, but the same things apply in a way. Um, you, you've dedicated the uh, the first book to all the children with mums and dads in prison. Did you speak to many when you were writing it? I did quite a lot, yes, because um, some specifically, but, but sort of over the years I had. Um, because it is this terrible thing that you're supposed to be punishing the prisoner, but actually what you do is inevitably is punish the family as well. And that's only very gradually being recognised by better treatment of parents and children. Because it, it, up, up till now, if you went to a prison as a, as a family or as a child, you really were made to, and it's still true, I'm afraid, in quite a lot of prisons. You know, you're made to feel that you, you are guilty as well because you've got this brother or son or father or whatever it is. So I think there's still an awful lot to be done on that side. And I think it probably needs to be led by noms uh, um, or by the government. It shouldn't be left to all the charities to do it. There should be an overarching organisation. Because after all, we stick people in prison and they, they're guilty. They go to prison. That's our system. But we're therefore condemning these parents uh, and the mother or the father and the children. And we do nothing about helping them. So we take away um, one parent. So they're, they're big arguments. With with Poppy, uh, it's clear that she probably won't follow in her father's footsteps. But there is another character uh, in these books, Angel, uh, who it's apparent from early on um, will likely get in more trouble. And I don't think it's giving away too much of the plot to say he does get in trouble with the police. And yeah. but this leads to a change in education for him. Yeah. Yeah. And was, was, again, was that he, he suddenly starts receiving one-to-one uh, -one support that helps his reading. Yeah. Um, was this something you'd, you'd noticed in cases of young offenders? Yeah, and, uh, th yes, very much so. I mean, one of the sad things is that uh, a, a child with a parent who goes into prison is something like, I can't remember, the percentage is very much higher that they will get into trouble themselves. And it's a sort of rather complicated way it works because if a child loves their father, then they will... In, think that's how they behave and if they see that that's by stealing or doing drugs or whatever they get a lot of money then it is obviously tempted to follow in their footsteps so it's 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 difficult I think, to keep that going but yeah Angel is my my bad boy but he's sort of much more charming than any of the others which is probably wrong of me and very dog PC to have a charming bad boy but he, he's not really bad at all he's just been brought up in a certain way and I would have thought teachers would find it quite easy to spot, I'm sure they do. It must be very obvious, um, a child and who's, who's having problems. And he, in the end, does go to a special school. Um, and I had talked to people at a school of that sort. And, but I think his real turnaround, um, which is giving away a bit, but there you go, uh, does come from sport. But he's a boy, it's not gonna work for a girl, but boys, as I say, tend to, to get into trouble more quickly. So. I think sport is the clue, probably, to all naughty boys. <laughs> Send them out. Get them out there. And there's a kind of eccentric character who takes him up and tries to help him. Uh, one, one of the questions we, we always get from young pupils and from teachers is what your advice would be to them as writers. Ah. As, as writers themselves? Yes. Uh, because oh, we, as the, the pupils, the, uh, yes, the if, students? If they, if, they, yes. if, they want, if they want to start a No, I love to talking to... Well, they can invite me to come and talk to their schools, <laughs> she said. I love talking to children about writing because they're so receptive. And uh, I think 
almost as soon as they can write fairly fluently without too much trouble. Children write the best stories you can imagine, you know, from sort of age eight onwards and in the last years of primary school, because their imaginations are so wild still, as long as they don't get too influenced by whichever um, games they're playing, then it's all killing. Well, the boys, it's all killing. But if they can sort of keep in touch with their imagination, so I think there are various advice I give. One is keep a diary, but children are, you know, they find that difficult to do that. But the other is, which is sort of easier and more fun, is keep do a running story. Quite a lot of children do it naturally. So you pick it up like a sort of series. And it's quite fun. And and say, you know, if one day you don't do any, it doesn't matter. But don't lose it altogether. And you only can, you can do two or three lines, or if that's the mood, or you can write two pages. Well, this is a technique the characters use in the book, where you see, where you see yeah, some of the children beginning right. to write, write a few sentences of a book, and then another child will continue it, and then a third child will illustrate it, and it becomes a team effort. Yeah, I think team effort's great fun, and children are good at that. They like that, and they can kind of mess about and have fun. Well, there's actually a book published in, in the first one in Poppy's Hero, which they're doing alternately. Um, I think if I do another one, I might go back to that, because I think books within books are, are fascinating, too, for children. And, and do you think there will, will be another book in the series? Because it, it seemed surprising at the end of the first one. Uh, did you know you were going to write a sequel? I, I hadn't really thought beyond... I didn't know what I was going to write. I did know I was going to write a sequel, but I hadn't properly sort of worked out what it would be. But I knew there was something more. And, of course, in the first book... Um, Poppy's father's in a serious prison. I mean, at the second book, he's in an open prison, and that causes problems. <laughs> he's a that sort of wild character. Um, so in the third one, he could be out, and who knows what Angel will get up to either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all have this to look forward to in the third book, hopefully hopefully in the series. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us. Um, both of uh, Rachel's books, Poppy's Heroes and Poppy's Angel, are available from bookshops and the publisher Francis Lincoln Books. Uh, our next TS chat with a children's author will be with Mallory Blackman, uh, who will be joining us on February the 28th. Uh, so do start sending in your questions for that. You can tweet them to hashtag TES chat or email them to webchat at tes.co.uk. Um, but before that, there's going to be a live lesson with the star scientist Professor Brian Cox, which is going to be on February the 6th. So we hope you'll join us for that. Uh, thank you again, and thanks to you.